Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at hm.com. Maruchan superfans are everywhere. From the busy moms who want to deliver maximum flavor in a flash to dorm room diners who want to put some slurp in their step. There are a ton of copycats you could use, but if you want to bless your bowl, there's only one true Maruchan. Whether you choose instant lunch, ramen bowls, yakisoba, or restaurant quality gold, Maruchan is the only ramen worth obsessing over. Smiles for all, Maruchan. See what all the ramen hype is about at maruchan.com. This podcast is brought to you by DrunkMummySoberMummy.com and made in association with HelloSundayMorning.org. This episode is proudly sponsored by Liars. They make lovingly crafted alcohol-free spirits. Go to liars.com.au and use the promo code SOBER20 to get 20% off. Oh, the kettle's boiled. Great. Perfect timing. Should we get started then? I'm Victoria Vanstone. I'm Lucy Good, and this is Sober Awkward. Right, Lucy, over to you. Thanks, Vic. So whatever stage you're at on your sober journey, and Vic and I are at completely different stages, you'll know that life without booze can at times feel, what do you reckon? Awkward. Lucy and I invite you to listen to our podcast where we discuss the realities of sobriety the good, the bad, the ugly, and the cringingly embarrassing. Our honest and open chats will help you discover what it really means to be sober. Yes, we're here like a dodgy bottle of port from your nan's drink cabinet to take the edge off sobriety. And together, we can learn how to feel the awkward and do it anyway. I sound a bit breathy, Lucy. (laughs) You do sound a bit breathy. Do I sound a bit croaky? Oh, we're on. Uh, Alan, uh, we need to ask you a question. We're in the studio here and we have a (laughs) urine-stained manky (laughs) mattress on the wall next to us. I'm not quite sure of the purpose. I'm guessing it's for sound purposes, Uh, not for us kipping here, I don't think. But have you kipped here last night, Alan? Might have done. Oh, that means he did. (laughs) Yeah. Gross. How horrible. I'm right yeah. next to it as well. Yeah. But I have to say, at least my microphone is not sitting on a box of power feed fish fertilizer like yours is, Vic. Yeah, I didn't notice it was power feed fish fertilizer with liquid compost. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Vic's microphone I mean, is sitting on. It sounds pretty ramshackle, doesn't it? Our well, setup it is pretty <laughs> But we're here and we're somehow recording our voices in a room. So, yeah, we'll forget. Try and I think our listeners can try and pretend we're somewhere a bit nicer than a piss-stained mattress in a box of power feed fish. <laughs> oh, and well. I think as well the fact that we're on the Sunshine Coast in Australia yeah, makes it sound really glamorous, doesn't it? No, it's just like being in England. <laughs> Have you had a good week, Lucy? I've had a good week, thanks, Vic. Yeah, pretty... Um... Yeah, pretty good, nice and balanced. Felt pretty chilled out all week. How about you? Yeah, good, not bad. I met up with a, an old mate of mine and we talked about a holiday we had in Greece many, many years ago. I'm just going to say my old mates that I talk about a lot, we're called the flies. I never really told you about this. And the reason we're called the flies is because in our clubbing days when we lived in Brighton, going to the Big Beak Boutique with Fat Boy Slim. Yay! Um, yeah, those are the days. We were called the flies because if anyone had any recreational drugs, we suddenly appeared like flies <laughs> round shit <laughs> to try and get a free whatever it Nothing was. Nothing like a few recreational drugs to yeah, bring out the back greed in the mid nineties. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that's kind of. Yeah, I think that stemmed from my drinking. I think my uh, 
I think my mind lapsed often and I was yes. was easily led. But anyway, that's a whole other story. I love that name, actually. It's cool. Yes, yeah, so the flies, I talk about them a lot. They're my my old mates from Brighton and we're still friends to this day. And we were talking about this crazy holiday we had in Greece where, you know, you had snogging competitions. It was just debaucherous. It was just bars. I remember being sick on some girl's leg one night. One girl woke up in the bucket of a digger, one of my friends. <laughs> Of a big sort of like yeah, roadway on a, digger. Yeah, on like a building site. She'd gone off and was some How guy. How dangerous and, is that? Yeah, she'd woken up in the bucket of a digger. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's just one story. But the funny story that I wanted to tell you tonight, I won't mention her name because she'd be terribly embarrassed, but we all know who it is, let's face it. <laughs> oh, you know who you are. Um, my friend um, went missing for a bit one night and another friend of mine found her in the morning and she was spread eagled on the bed in our apartment on her own, like face down like a starfish. And when my other friend approached her, she noticed there was something sticking out of her bottom. (laughs) And as she approached, she plucked it out and it was the guy that she'd been snogging that night as he'd left and she'd passed out. He'd just popped his business card in her (laughs) ass cheeks. I thought you were going to say it was him. He was stuck in there. (laughs) It's actually quite a romantic story because in the end, like we plucked it out and we're like, who is this guy? And we ended up, uh, she ended up going out with him for a bit, actually. And we saw him again that night. We were like, yeah, that's a slick move, mate. I don't know whether he was trying to swipe it like a, like a visa. (laughs) Anyway, so what this is leading to is, me and my friends are talking about this, these crazy nights out, all these adventures we used to have. You know, those things don't happen sober, do they, they Lucy? I no, mean, they don't. You don't have these adventures. I've had a lot in my past, so I have a lot, a big repertoire of things that have happened. But these escapades are really my drinking stories. They're not my sober stories. So what we're talking about today is how do you manage people like us who, who have been there, done that, done those drinking crazy nights how do we have a normal night out and enjoy ourselves without alcohol and it's a really good question I think it's the same same with drinking or any drug once you started using it for quite a long time it takes you to this high and you need that every time you go out Um, and when you stop drinking you can't reach that high so you're just going out on a different level and especially when everyone else around you is going out drinking and they're reaching that high you feel a little bit left behind and a little bit low yeah you do and so last week in our podcast we spoke about going out with sober people yeah Um, so no alcohol in the picture at all Um, and with people like us who had a problem with drinking and they had got sober and how difficult that can be and how to do it Yeah, so this week we're talking about going out with people that are still drinking. So still hanging out with your old mates, the ones that you've always known, but you're entering a situation as a different person, somebody that doesn't drink and somebody that doesn't end up probably going on the same escapades that you used to. So today we're doing a top 10 guide of your first sober shindig. Yeah, because we want to be able to help you to do it. And yeah. we, you know, we're not saying that you have to go out and do this all the time. You might not fancy doing it anymore, but occasionally there's going to be times yeah. when you have to go because it's a Weddings special event or, yeah. or friend's birthday and you really want to go and you don't want to miss out. So how do you go out and enjoy your night without having those mad, crazy stories to tell at the end of it? And those stories, they are really funny. Yeah, um, We do still laugh at our drunken stories, don't we? Yeah. I mean, we still getting mileage out of them even yeah. now but I mean, we've got enough to last a lifetime and yeah and I don't want to wake up with things sticking out of my bottom anymore no no, no. I've <laughs> been there done that yeah. <laughs> okay so what were we going to call this one I think it's guide to your first sober shindig and it is 10 tips on how to make it through your first night out where there are other people drinking Um, So Vic and I have both found the process of socialising sober really hard. And honestly, being so newly sober, I'm still struggling big time with this one. So I'm looking forward to this episode. Yeah, I know you struggle with it, Lucy, which I think is actually going to be really helpful for our listeners. At first, I found it awkward too. But now I know the tricks of the trade to make sure I have a good night. I think now's a great time for us to discuss them in the hope that I can drag you to a few parties. Maybe. We shall see. We shall see. (laughs) So today we're going to take you through 10 top tips. I keep saying tits. 
We've just got four top tits here in the studio. <laughs> really nice ones they are. Yeah. Our top titties <laughs> on how to make sure your first ever sober social isn't a total disaster. We both know how awkward it is to even leave the house in early sobriety, let alone socialise. But newsflash, it is possible to enjoy a night out as a newly sober person. It just takes practice. Which I haven't had. No, which you need, <laughs> desperately. Um, but what you need, because I have done it a few times, is a plan, Stan. In fact, you may need a multitude of plans to guarantee you enjoy this monumental, life-changing, sober social experience. Because if you don't enjoy it, it can stir up all sorts of feelings. Things like feeling left out, feeling overwhelmed and, of course, feeling like drinking again. Yes, and we don't want that. We hope this guide to your first sober social will soften the blow of your first interactions as a sober person and will allow you to achieve what seems impossible, socialising with your mates with nothing but the real authentic you and a glass of fizzy water. <laughs> fun, fun, fun! <laughs> yeah, that sounds really exciting. <laughs> it can be, Lisa, don't you worry. <laughs> Hopefully, once you've listened to this podcast, you'll feel fully prefer- prepared for a night out with friends. So much so that you'll grab your phone and accept that invite you've been agonising over because you deserve to be, have a happy social life and you will get better the more you try, we promise. What we want you to take away from this podcast today is the strength and confidence to be you in this confronting environment. We want you to hold your head high and say, nope, I don't drink, without feeling self-aware or uncomfortable in any way. Basically, we want you to have fun, do bad robot dancing, giggle with your mates and to... Right, are you ready for this? Yeah, bit? Okay, feel... I'll do, I'll do, oh, no, oh, wait, go on, wait, go on. wait, wait, because I'm going to... One, two, three. Three. Feel, feel the, the awkward, awkward and, and do, do it, it anyway. anyway. I don't. I really don't feel <laughs> did, your heart was. Did in you like that. my monotone voice? I just feel. don't feel that was. <laughs> I was doing like a robot voice <laughs> instead of the robot dancing. Yeah. I don't think it came out as powerful feel as we awkward, wanted yeah. it to be. Anyway, <laughs> I know at first when I went out sober and I pretended to be drunk, it was really embarrassing. Lucy, I did it all the time. <laughs> It was extremely tiring. I'll tell you what, people don't do that because pretending to be drunk when you're sober is really, really hard. I was just always pretending to be the extrovert. But over time, I've relaxed into it and I've realised I no longer have to be the life and soul. It does take a few outings before you find your feet. I think Lucy's feet might be stuck at home in a pair of slippers because I've been struggling to get her out. Even though I think it's great that you feel self-assured, Lucy, enough to say no, that is part of this sober journey is learning how to say no, I think you think you're not ready. So I'm still a little bit worried about you being a hermit forever. I think it might be useful here, Lucy, before we go over the tips, the top titties, to tell the listeners why you feel nervous about socialising since ditching the grog. It's interesting you should ask it like that, Vic, because I don't feel nervous about it, not anymore. So I'm around about 10, just over 10 months sober. Um, But I was nervous um, and it was really difficult at first. And there was that feeling of, oh, my God, what if I just can't hold myself back? And I'm just grabbing someone's glass of red wine and downing it. Oh, gosh, yeah. Because it's that confronting. You just feel, oh, my God, you'd think you'd go into the situation and go, oh, my God, I can't do this. Give me a beer. Yeah, and you're surrounded by alcohol and people drinking. Yeah. So it's the answer. It's the answer that I've been using for 25 years yeah. to socialise. So you're putting yourself out there in the danger zone, really. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, and so, yeah, I was very scared and I was very nervous um, to socialise um, with other people who were drinking. But it's not nerves anymore. For me, that went. And um, I'd like to explain it because I think it will be a lot um, the same for a lot of people. And I didn't expect this next stage. I thought you just had to get through the part where you're not going to drink, you know, drink someone else's drink and yeah. and uh, end up getting plastered accidentally. Yeah, licking the bar for instance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Spill beers. Or just breathing the fumes yeah. of someone's yeah. espresso martini. I'm still a bit like that with cigarettes though. Someone's smoking, I'm still like, Ooh, yeah, don't mind let me have a whiff. Every now and then. <laughs> I know where you're coming from there. But now, so it's moved on to another stage where, look, I can go out around drink. I know that I've got enough self-control um, and the actual sort of physical addiction and need for the alcohol to be in my system has gone gone it's more about going out and being able to socialize without being 
drunk or at least tipsy. Um, it, it's about having a different personality and nearly all of my life since I was 15, when I went out to a social event, I will have had a drink and I would have avoided the event if I couldn't have a drink. And often it would mean having a drink before I went out. And I think that's, mm. you know, that is sort of a bit of a red flag that your drinking's out of control when you need a drink to get out the door. And I was like that for many years. So it was more about, for me at the moment, it's definitely more about teaching an old dog new tricks. Yeah. I have been socialising with alcohol for so long that I don't know how to socialise sober. And it is, it's a fact that our brain are are um, set up in a different way if we've been socialising whilst drinking. We have to change the pathways in our brain. It's like learning a new language. Yeah, so there is that thing called neuroplasticity, isn't yeah. there? That you, it means that your brain is capable of changing and evolving. Yeah. And, and, you, you know, and the brain does have to change to be able to socialise sober. And so that's why it can be so difficult to get out the door. Um, I've my, my two main reasons for drinking, looking back, because I've now got the clarity to work it out, was shyness and sadness mm. and shyness was something that really made me have to have a drink it, t- it it turned my introvert personality into an extrovert and now because I don't drink I'm back to being an introvert I've got two choices here I can go back to the drink and go out or I can relearn everything and go out and it's just exhausting to yeah. relearn everything and sometimes I wonder if I really want to do that yeah so that's probably a lot of the reason why mm. I don't want to go out. And just a final point on that as well, and it's something that you've mentioned, Vic, which really resonated with me, which is the light's too bright. Mm. When you go out sober, especially with people who are drinking, it's like somebody's shining a light on your face and ev- you're really sensitive to everything. You can feel everything, all those things that you were able to mask before yeah. with a few gulps of alcohol. I-, I remember when I went out for the first time, like similar thing, I remember the feeling of the lights, but it was not only that, I was so conscious of everything around me. I, mm. I felt like I could see the blood pumping through people's yes. veins. I felt like... I was overly aware and that my I could see things that I didn't know whether they were happening or not, mm. like people blinking, people's voices, the noises in the bar, everything, you know, I felt You're very, very raw, completely yes. oversensitive. And that's not a comfortable way of feeling. It's horrible. You're not relaxed. You're not having a good time. You're just overly aware. And that made me not want to go out again. So I totally understand yeah, what you're saying. It there. is. It's like the bright light and also being empaths as well. You know, you're worried about how you feel. You're worried about how everyone else in the room feels. And quite, quite frankly, it is just exhausting and it's enough to make you think I'm just not going to bother doing it and that's why and we spoke about it in our last podcast I'm quite enjoying finding different ways to socialize um to me going out to a bar and all you're doing is socializing is quite a weird thing Mm. you know you're just going there to talk to other people it's quite confronting really no wonder we needed a drink to do it I'd much rather go out and be doing something else, even if it's going for a meal with a friend where we're talking and enjoying the food or I'm doing some charity work where I'm helping in the shop or exercise and talking to other people, but going out and just socialising. Yeah, because it was just drinking. Yeah. It was drinking and socialising. Now it's just socialising. So, yeah, and it can be hard. Yeah, and so that's that's where my problem lies and it's whether can I be bothered doing it or not more than anything. Yeah, fair enough. And what do you see for your future socializing like this is this is where i come into things because i desperately want to go out with you more and yeah. i don't want to invite you to things so i don't want you to feel to feel pressure because that would be awful and then i don't want to be disappointed when you say no but like how do i go about inviting you to things well I mean, you know that I'll always be honest with you. And I think you're probably, I I have let quite a few friends down by saying I'm going to go out to a social event with them or go around to their house. And I, as you know, I've had the, um, I've been completely genuine in my intentions to go. And then Mm. at the last minute, I changed my mind. And I know that some of my friends have, been quite upset by that but I feel like you're probably the only person who yeah. completely understand yeah. where I'm coming from with it yeah. um I I don't know really mm. that's why this podcast is really quite helpful to me because yeah. I have done social I have done social events with other people who are drinking I did lots of them when I first gave up and I suppose I feel like I've got them under my belt I can do them and I don't want to do them anymore yeah fair enough no I totally understand it and I think it's great that you 
are at a stage in your life where you can say no and feel confident in that answer because sometimes it's about also saying no if you don't feel comfortable in a situation you're not ready to go into a bar then do say no for as long as it takes until you can say yes because we don't want sober people staying at home forever I think we we need we've got something to prove a little bit and we need to go out and we do need to have fun and we still need to socialize because that human connection is really important in life so these tips I hope will yeah for, for the people like you that are staying at home a bit more than they obviously obviously a lot more than than they used to I hope that these tips the top tips will help yes I'm they will they're going to help me and I'm sure they'll help other people as well because you know obviously I do worry that I'm going to end up very lonely you've already got one cat haven't you (laughs) two oh yeah you've got two now yeah oh they're multiplying I know I know oh god I'm going to be a cat lady but I I also, that, that's what I, meant, what I mentioned earlier is that we're not we're not doing this po- podcast to force you out into an environment that you're uncomfortable in, um, but it's about giving you some support for those situations that you have to go to. And if you are that sort of person who, like Vic is now, who can go out and really enjoy an event and there's alcohol there and she's with her drinking friends and it doesn't matter, she has a great time. If you want to get to that stage, I don't think I will get to that stage. I think I'm going to go in a slightly different direction, mm. but these tips are going to be really helpful. Yeah. So the first one we're going to talk about today is tell people I'm sober before I go. Yes. So, so these are really most of these are your tips, aren't they? Really? Yeah. Um, I think I've added two in. Yeah. So I like to, well, originally I told people what I was doing. I told people that I was not drinking before I met them. So most people knew. I told them in a coffee, you know, a coffee morning or in a text. I didn't want people to get disappointed. So I thought it was good to cover the whole story and then not be out somewhere and have to go through it in an environment that wasn't comfortable. I mean, being in a pub surrounded by pissheads with living on a prayer blasting from the speakers behind you isn't the best (laughs) time to have a deep conversation, (laughs) is it? It's definitely not the time. No. So come out of the closet. Don't be ashamed of who you are and do it before you go out. If you're going out with some big drinking mates, make sure you tell them your plan about not drinking. I think it's really important. You don't want people to be disappointed on the night. They need to know in advance so that they don't give you a hard time when you're already out. Which makes it particularly hard. Yeah. Um, Is your point here, Vic, that we have to be completely honest and say, look, I've given up drinking because... It wasn't doing me any favours, so when I come out tonight, I shan't be drinking. Or can we lie and say, I'm driving or I'm on antibiotics? Well, I would say, I know I have done that in the past, but I would say (laughs) you have to be honest now. You've got nothing to be scared about. Lots of people are sober now and it's like it's actually a cool thing to it do. Is. So just be honest and be who you are and say, this is what I'm doing and I'm doing it for these reasons. Sometimes you might not feel like that. you need to explain to people what you're doing because your answer that you're sober should be enough. And we are getting there. So the society is changing a little bit with, with those questions. So, But don't be shy. Don't lie. Say your honest truth that you're, you quit drinking and, and that should be enough especially if you're if they're good friends and if they're not well we've got answers for that which we've discussed before yes, in this, yes, in this podcast have. and isn't it weird because we're so worried about telling people that we've quit drinking because yeah. we think they'll be disappointed yeah. we almost feel guilty yeah. but in fact a good friend probably knows that you are struggling yeah. and will be really supportive of you and there's not one time Lucy when I've said to someone I don't drink or I've explained to them what I do and why I say look it made me unwell and all of these other reasons there has not been one time where I've been given a, a given a you know a hard time me neither and I think as well people if anything they're quite relieved because they know that they're not going to have to look after you all evening (laughs) I'm not going to be repeating the same story with dribble on my chin yeah not going to be like although I still do that trying to pull the waiter (laughs) yeah yeah. pull the waiter oh gosh yeah who's like 20 years younger embarrassing Lucy (laughs) whilst you've got the dribble on your chin (laughs) and the red wine teeth (laughs) oh hello oh you're gorgeous how old are you (laughs) Yeah, I couldn't work out why I, why I never was successful yeah. with that one. It's <laughs> yes, embarrassing. You wake up the next day and go, oh, oh my God. God, what was I doing? Yeah, hopefully you don't remember any of it. But if a little glimmer <laughs> comes back to you, it's horrifying. Yeah. Um, okay, our next tip is a really good one, to choose the right venue and the right friends to go out with exactly. for the first time. Yeah, choose somewhere without association. So go somewhere where it wasn't your old haunt. Old haunts have ghosts. 
<laughs> and those <laughs> ghosts are the ones you want to avoid because they're just going to bring you reminders and triggers and all of those feelings of drinking, those cosy pub corners that we talked mm. about last week, all of those lovely places where you used to drink are the places you want to avoid. I would anyway. Um, go somewhere quieter where you can talk to friends, where you can hear what people are saying, where there isn't any chaos going on around you. Um, yeah, it, avoid chaotic places with bad influences. Um, choose the right friends to go out with. Make sure it's supportive people, especially in these first outings. Maybe along the line you can go out with the more kind of messier group and once your confidence built. But for now, choose the friends that you know are going to be kind to you and make sure that you're safe. Um, go somewhere near a bus stop because if you get fed up, you want to jump on the bus. I recommend don't offer to be a driver because if you do, there's a chance you might end up having to stay all night to drive people home. And if there's a point where you feel uncomfortable, you might want to leave. So don't be the driver. But I think, Lucy, you've got a different opinion here. Haven't you? Oh, well, no, I do agree with you on that. But it was I, I, the first sober event that I ever went on. And it was a really nice evening, actually. But it was a very late lunch. We sort of had lunch about four. There was, I think, seven of us, good friends. Everyone was super supportive. Um, and I had a really nice time, went along to a bar afterwards and I'd driven and I was really hoping to be able to give somebody a lift home yeah. because I felt that for once, yeah. just for once in all these years. I was the responsible one. Yeah. And I wasn't even the person who had had like one and a half drinks and was like, am I going to be okay? I was completely sober and I was in the perfect position. But everyone was partying on and getting louder and louder. And so I sort of thought, oh, okay, I'm going to go now. And so I announced to the people who were still coherent that I was leaving. And then one of my friends piped up and said, oh, you couldn't drop me home on the way, could Score. you? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> my moment has come. Oh. I couldn't be happy to give someone a lift um, and yeah we had a great chat on the way home and I was yeah really pleased that I was able to do that you just feel like the adult for once yeah, yeah. I'm adulting yes. at 46 I'm an adult so yeah it. how mature I am I can drive a vehicle <laughs> yeah look I had Without a police car behind me actually about yeah. two days ago and I think he please stop me yeah. please stop me <laughs> sad isn't it <laughs> it is but no I actually agree with your advice drive by all means yes, but drive. don't offer to be the driver which means you've got to stay around yeah because there there might be points where you want to do a runner yeah a good point is avoid festivals music festivals for a while <laughs> i went to one sober i went to see the stone roses oh, which i, I love well, yeah them. and i loved i've loved them forever oh, and they, they remember they got back together yeah and I was like, oh my god this is the gig of a lifetime yeah and I was so nervous. I don't know why, because I wasn't drinking. It was one of my first non-drinking events. I wasn't drinking. Everybody was off their tits around me. And actually, I just felt kind of jealous in a way mm. because I just felt like everybody else was having the night of their life and I just, the, the, the night of their life. And I was just this kind of square, bopping up and down, not really into it. It was cold. It was muddy. I couldn't go to the toilet because everyone else was peeing all over the place and there was nowhere f clean to me for you. And you to usually, use, yeah. you wouldn't worry about I that. I wouldn't have worried about drunk, that before, no. but everything about a festival environment for me used to be about getting off my nut. And shitting in a bush. And shitting in a bush. <laughs> and now all of a sudden I'm this prim and proper person yes. holding two bottles of fizzy water because <laughs> I couldn't be bothered to queue for the bar again. And I just looked like a total dork. Anyway, but that I would, didn't enjoy it. And I think as well that would be really hard because I mean, my memory of the Stone Rose were first around when we were we must have been in our um, late teens yeah. early 20s so really really deep into the drinking days yeah. so even I listen to the Stone Roses a lot in my car I just love them they're timeless but mm. they really do take me back and remind me of those drinking days so you were very brave going to that concert I was brave and I regret it now but actually that was quite early on in my sobriety I think now I, was I would say, do okay yeah. but I'd probably go I'd rather probably go to an opera or something <laughs> an opera <laughs> I was going to say, well, I thought you could say, oh, and I'll take a little like a little uh, potty with me in case yeah. I need the toilet. I actually got a mate who wears nappies to festivals. You are joking. No, <laughs> no she goes, she puts an adult nappy on. She can't that, be That's awful. Oh, that's, that's the sort of people I hang around with. No, because I, I do remember once going to a concert and taking my daughter when my kids were young and it had, um, you know, do you, I don't know if you ever saw them. They were like potties, but they folded up and you yeah. put a little sort of carrier bag in there to catch it and then you could did just you throw it, it away. Did you? Well, I took it with me. I never ended up using it because I was still drinking. I probably just went in the bush. <laughs> yeah, I was wearing it on my head or something. But yeah. wearing an adult nappy, oh, mm. that's even worse. I'm wearing it, one now, Lucy. Oh, 
I wondered what the stench was. <laughs> Too much. Our dump nappies, where are we going? Yeah, start again. Right. Yeah, so don't so, go to yeah. a Stone Roses concert. <laughs> just, so we go a bit off on one. Sorry, <laughs> listeners. Always ends up with some dirty story, doesn't it? <laughs> avoid festivals, avoid, uh, yeah, German beer festivals and wineries, things like that that are just really boozy for your mm. first social thing is not a good idea. So, yeah, baby steps. Anything <laughs> based around getting off your noggin is not a good idea. What was your latest public social disaster, Lucy? Oh, well, the, yeah, because I when we first started doing this podcast, I was saying to everyone that I was going to a really good friend's birthday yeah. and um, I was going to go, I wasn't going to let her down. And in the end, I did let her down. But yeah, w- what my problem was, um, and it's really relevant to this one, which is choosing the right venue. Um, what I was going to go, everything was fine. Earlier on the day um, that that it was happening, I went and had a look at the venue and the the menu, and I realised it was the more venue menu, a venue menu, oh, yeah. <laughs> the venue and the menu, and I realised it was more of a a bar venue than yes. a restaurant. Oh, I remember this, and yeah. that was my first red flag of yeah. of choose of finding things excuses not to go. Yeah, um, apparently it's much it's very restaurant like, and they told me um, that I should have gone and it would have been fine, and I'm sure it would have been. They're all very lovely, but. Yeah, so that right venue is really important. Yeah, somewhere looking with and, no yeah, association like Looking that. and seeing that it's... A, uh, going to a bar is a lot harder than mm-hmm. going to a restaurant. Yeah. And I like a restaurant set up as well because if they decide to have a... Um, an, an, an after dinner cocktail or something you can have a coffee mm. you know you can't do that as easily in the bar or you can order a dessert and you don't stand out I mean you can't sit in a busy bar and order an ice cream <laughs> ice cream sundae I don't know Lucy I've work. done it I've done I'll it have, well, I do, you have my peppermint teas in the bar sometimes yes oh, well we've done that we've we have done that yeah. peppermint te- but you do you, fit, you, you want to fit in so anything that's going to draw attention to you is difficult so yeah. that I love the point of it being the right venue and the right friends that leads on to our next one actually which is be prepared number three yes um think about what you want to drink before you go like look at the menu online which is exactly what lucy was just talking about if it's a dinner then byo but then you've got other situations like house parties and weddings and all things like that so bring your own stash of alcohol free drinks i mean that's a really good idea have a you know an esky filled up with stuff that you want to drink so there's no question <laughs> can of you, you really get a whole it. esky full of alcohol free yeah, drinks I'm sure you can. <laughs> of course we've still got the uh the Liars promo going at the moment. So, yeah if, you, yeah, if you want to take any BYO, bring something by Liars. The promo code is SOBER20. Today, me and Lucy are here sitting, sipping on the spiced cane spirit, which is lovely. Yeah, I like that so, one. So, yeah, anything by Liars is good. Is it With mixers and stuff is amazing. You can just put that code into liars.com.au. And I'll just say as well, I like the idea of it as well because they do look like alcoholic drinks. Yeah. So, you're not going to be, you're not going to start so talking about fitting in again. Yeah, so take mixers and sparklers and parrots on sticks if you want to drink if you want your drink to feel more special it is sometimes just about having that treat so that you do feel like you fit in and feel accepted by your friends ice and a slice makes me happy lucy <laughs> you're there's, easily pleased there's no pins in there but something that makes me feel special <laughs> a sparkler anything that makes me feel like i'm having something like a treat it makes me feel happier in those situations yeah and you mentioned about the menu online as well and I know it almost sounds I mean I would never ever have looked at a menu online before I went out wouldn't even have crossed my mind until I got sober but another reason I quite like to do it is you have to put quite a lot of energy into these events I mean we always say it's exhausting don't we even going to a sober group event where you you come out and your face hurts from smiling so much yeah but at least it's from smiling yes your face doesn't hurt from frowning no it's good (laughs) Why have I got all these frown lines? Although after this podcast, my face hurts from frowning. (laughs) Looking at you for so long. You're going to say from laughing. <laughs> um, yeah, laughing. But no, they, it is exhausting, these events, going out and being sober. And you've got so many things going on in your head. You've got all the mantras that you need and all the, all the things you have to remember and, and the effort that you're taking to socialise and to stay sober. Um, so it can be good to look at that menu before so you don't have to actually choose. You go along knowing what you're going to have. Yeah. Um, so you don't have to kind of do all the things that you're trying to do as well as choosing what you're going to have to eat. Yeah, it sounds really awful. It sort of takes all the all the excitement out of going out for dinner and the fun out of it looking at the menu online, but it can help. And the other one I'd like to add to this as well, which I've, um, from experience, is um, take cash. I know none of us take cash anywhere, any anywhere anymore, um, but it can really help to take some denominations of, say, tens, 
I've been at um, a really nice dinner with some friends and I just got to the, they, you know, we got to the dessert bit and I was ready to go. Yeah. Um, but I couldn't get the bill. It was so busy and then they wouldn't split the bill. Um, and luckily my friend said, look, I'll pay for you. And I paid her back online, but it was yeah. difficult. And if you just um, add up in your head how much your food has come to and your drink, you can just pop the money down on the table and go. And also you don't want to pay for other people's expensive alcoholic drinks. I know it sounds like the party poop and you don't want to be that, but just to sneak up to the cash register and say to the waitress, look, can I just yeah. I haven't drunk anything, I'm just gonna pay for mine before you leave. I mean, even before the bill comes, you can do that. Because I don't want to pay for people's expensive bottles of Merlot and stuff no. like when I've drunk fizzy water all night. And I would never have expected anyone to do that for me no. when I was drinking. But once the booze is down the, yeah, the rest of the think. people there, they don't think they just oh let's just split the bill and it's actually like yeah. And they're super generous. Yes. So when you're drinking, you're so generous, you end up paying for everyone yeah, else's. You don't care, but when yeah. you're sober, you're a, you're a tight ass. Yeah, basically. <laughs> T- a boring tight ass. Yeah. Um, now, I've got one here as well. Um, and again, something that was really relevant to me, which I hope might help others. But if you have struggled in the past, like I have, know what your red flags are um, and what are the things that are stopping you from going. So um, for me, <laughs> I've worked out that I'll have good intentions to go. But then as the time comes nearer to go, Going, I'll find excuses. One excuse is not enough to stop me going. Mm. But the next excuse, I'm like, okay, I I don't think I can do this event because this has happened and that's happened. And then the third thing, which and I will find the excuse, and I've got myself the excuse and I can back out. So I have to just say to myself, I'm not going to let those excuses get in my way. Um, I, I have to make sure that the venue is definitely something that I'm going to be happy with. That's a really important one for me. So they're kind of my red flags, the venue um, and trying to find those excuses not to go. Um Work out what it is that's stopping you want to go. You know, sometimes there might be someone who's going. There's someone in the group who is quite intimidating Mm -hmm. and you just don't feel comfortable. It doesn't mean you don't like them, but you just don't feel comfortable with them. So sometimes focusing on what it is is particularly that's causing the problem and then trying to solve a way around it. Or if you can't solve a way around it, accept that that's what it is and then turn the offer down. Yeah, and also you can look at it as a challenge. I mean... Going out with somebody who you don't like or triggers you or is annoying or talks too much or any of these things, in life we have to socialise with people we don't like often. Mm. It's something that comes up, even if it's just because they've said something you don't like in the moment. We still have to get on with it. It's part of life. Nothing's ever going to be perfect. And I think, you know, you can look at this first sober night out as a bit of a challenge that you're going to go through. And at the end of it, if you complete it, you're going to feel good and then you're going to feel better about it. It's not going to be perfect. It is going to be challenging and you just got to try and fight your way through it. And it's a practice, isn't it? A bit like meditation or yoga. The more that you get out and do it, the better. But yeah, that was that was just one of mine. One of the things that you can do in a situation, which is our next point, which is going to help with all of those things Lucy's just talked about, is to take a sober mate. Like That's why I'm trying to drag Lucy out everywhere with me, because I do need that sober mate. You need a sober mate. Yeah, someone that (laughs) I can nudge and go, have you heard what this twat's saying? Or, you know, surely with your business, you've got enough sober mates. Yeah, I've got a few, but you're my (laughs) favourite. God, I nearly gagged on my drink then. (laughs) She's got her lovely tea there in her glass <laughs> casket. Is that what it's called? No, that's... I don't know what they're called. They're really yeah, cool. Tea thing, yeah. These are really cool. We'll for photo. Anyone. We might, yeah, just, yes. I might just mention it. Our tea things. <laughs> we're not being sponsored or anything. Yes, we're not. <laughs> Nothing to do with that. But no, we've got both got these um, flasks. I got you one from T2. Yes. Uh, but they're insulated flasks and they're really cool to put tea or coffee in when you're going out. Yeah. And um, so you've just got something to drink while everyone else is down in their wine yeah, or their so, beer. Yeah, so yeah, take one of those out. Mm. I mean, they're great. Yeah. Um, so but, the yes. sober mate is there to support you and give you inspiration. I was saying to Lucy that it's a really good idea, if you can, is to go out with someone who's a bit further along the line with you than you on this sober journey so that you can be sort of inspired by their behaviour. If they're acting like normal and not looking scared and having normal inter- interactions with their friends and even dancing and just doing things that normal people do on a night out, then it's going to really inspire you to reach that point and keep going until you can be as confident as that person. So watch and learn from them, see how they interact. It's... um. Good to have someone there to back you up if there's people hassling you as well, like, why aren't you mm. having a drink? Oh, what's wrong with you? Go on, just have one. If there's somebody there saying, look, 
they're like me. This is why we're doing this. Somebody who's going to be more vocal and more confident telling them about their sobriety journey. That's always going to be great. Someone to pump you up as you're getting ready. That's fantastic while you're getting ready at home. And someone to gossip with in the taxi on the way home. Yeah, talk I about mean, how pissed everyone was and how yeah, they were all making such yeah. fools of themselves. Yeah, how much better you are than everybody. Yes, how high and mighty we are with our noses in the air. And someone to um, order a pot of peppermint tea with so yeah. you don't feel like a right loser on your own. Yeah, and um, someone to give you accolades. We talked about accolades last week. Someone to go, yeah. look, you're all right. Yeah, you're Nothing's doing really happening. Well. There's no need to feel anxiety. You're doing really, really well. I'm here with you. Sometimes you just need that person. So if you can get a sober mate to come out with you on your first sober social, then we highly recommend it. Will you come with me, Vic? Nah. Ah. Oh. <laughs> She's such a sorry, such mate. A I'm cow. busy. I'm busy that night. <laughs> <laughs> you are horrible. But I want to watch and learn from the master. Yeah. <laughs> the guru. Look how I interact with fellow humans. I was thinking I should have. Um, you should have read out the tag. You know, I gave you a scarf last week. Yes. And what did I put? Can you remember what I put on the tag? No. No. It said. It said to my guru. Oh yeah. With love and thanks. You poor misguided fool. <laughs> you are the master. Stuff. <laughs> you you are the person I need to learn this stuff from. I should be taking advantage. I'm so lucky God, to have you. God, I bet not you. relapse. <laughs> God, that you know, honestly, what would happen if you relapsed? Oh, well, I would have to. I'd be as absolutely well, mortified I? if you did. I'd be, I'd be absolutely. You worry about I'd, me. Don't I do you? worry about you. you sometimes. sometimes Vic worries. If I don't I do. answer the phone in. I the do. Morning. I'm like, oh gosh, let's hope Lisa's all right. Hope he doesn't relapse. <laughs> passed out in a gutter somewhere. Right. Next Take one. Take time out to process emotion. When I used to go out as a drinker, I drank through any emotions I was feeling. I numbed out excitement with a cheap red and dissolved shyness into a pint of Cronenberg. So try to let emotions pass through you and not react to them. Then let them go. Um, that is really important because... That's what we learn in this sober journey. I know mm. I keep saying the word journey, which is extremely cheesy and I hate it. So you can punch me in the face, Lucy, every I time I say it. I don't mind the word. I don't, but I it, is it is a journey, a journey and yeah. it is a learning process. Um, and and a practice, feeling, yes, a practice, a practice, as a as practice well. yes, a meditation <laughs> of sobriety. Um, and being nervous is normal. So let those nerves, sometimes that line between nervousness and excitement, I know, is it's a very fine line. So if you're feeling nervous, try and change that into excitement if you can. And I think for people like us who have drunk for so long, any feeling that came to us, if it was nervousness, if it was excitement, what we do, pick up a drink. Yeah. So what we've got to do is learn to be able to go out and feel those feelings, but not pick up that drink. And it really goes against everything we've been doing for many years. Yeah. And that's why it's hard, mm. because it is totally the opposite of what you've been doing all of your life. Mm. So, of course, it's going to be hard. Take deep breaths and remember your why. Why are you doing this? Why have you chosen to not drink? Play the tape forward. It's our favourite saying. Always play that tape forward. Remember what would happen if you did have a drink. That first one, that second one. Then you wriggling around on the dance floor like a dead fly with your knickers in the air. I mean, <laughs> it's happened to me before, Lucy. I'm sure it's happened oh, to you. Oh, God, yeah. Many times. So you don't want to get to that point. You know what the results are. You know what the hangover's like, the shame, anxiety, the guilt, all of that stuff. So wind it back and remember why you're doing this. So stand up tall as well. That's really important as yeah, well. Yeah, be Lucy. proud of what you're be doing. Be proud of what you're doing in that situation. You don't need to be nervous. You need to feel good. You've got this. You are going to be fine. You know, one of the great things about being sober is you know that you're not going to make a fool out of yourself. You've done it all. You've been mm. there. You've done that. You know that you're going to wake up the next day and feel amazing without any regrets. So you've got this. Do stand up tall and realise that you're the one making a good decision here in this environment. And also to accept that it might be really boring being in a place where everybody else is drinking and they can't really string a sentence together. It's OK to feel that. You might be thinking, oh, I'm boring for thinking this is boring because I used to find this kind of thing so much fun and everybody else is enjoying themselves. It's quite normal if you're in a room of people who are drinking to be bored senseless and you don't want to listen to the shit that's coming out of their mouths. No. I mean, you've got to redefine boring. You've got to redefine you fun. Do. Yeah. That's our main message here is like it, it isn't going to be how it used to be. It's, it's going changed. To be different. It's going to be different. And the next one is one of your hardest ones, which is to shake off the opinions of others. Oh, the old people pleaser. Yeah. yeah. Classic. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> it's my worst one. I mean, my fear of being a party pooper is huge. 
But I'm learning to live with the fact that I'm not going to be the one that's responsible for everybody else's night and all that stuff. I have no control over what people think. I need to stop trying to imagine what they're thinking because I can't see inside someone's brain, unfortunately, even though I would love to. Um, So I find it confronting people thinking perhaps that I'm now boring, but I'm now taking that on board. And Mm. as we said, I'm trying to redefine that by still, you know, I do act like a bit of a tit still when I'm out. I do try and still act like I mean, an that's extrovert. part of who you are it's really part of isn't it? i'm just a dickhead <laughs> so i'm learning to accept that i am that and that's okay so, yeah, it's so, about so being you the re- shake yeah. off those opinions of others because because that is a huge burden and it's something you can't control and so often as well when you're so worried about the opinion of others you've actually got those you, you you're guessing what their opinions of you, you are, are and you've probably got it wrong they're probably quite relieved that you're not drinking and you're not a liability anymore yeah. they're probably quite glad that you're there yeah um and and they don't think you're boring at all they're probably a lot of people i'm sure are, are quite envious of, yeah. of what you've done so there we are thinking all the worst of every Everything. Oh God, they're going to think we're boring and everything negative. But in fact, uh, that might not be. So what's the might point of the going? It's pointless. What's the point of going it's over it? But wasted it is energy, different. isn't it? It really is. Yes. Yeah. So I was reading. I was reading a book actually. I think I said to you when we were talking earlier in the week. I, this keeps coming up. It said that worrying um, is like paying early interest on a debt you might never have. Oh yes, that and so that's true. very much like sitting yeah. there trying to guess what other people are thinking and then reacting to it when you don't actually know. I mean, it's easier said than done. But if you really put yourself in in the moment and think about I have no idea what that person has in their brain yeah so therefore, it's just pointless me standing here worrying about it. Especially if they're drinking. They're probably yeah. thinking of something completely out there. Yeah, they're just probably thinking about worry. what they're having to drink but next, they, which is all I was doing. Yeah, exactly. I was never yeah. conscious of anybody else when yeah. I was out, ever. All I was conscious of was where my next drink was me coming too. from and who that fit bloke is at the bar. Yeah, that he was wasn't it. fit. I was like, right, drink, <laughs> he was. who's that man? Can I capture him? That was it. And my little net in my pocket. And he and he was running away, yeah, looking I was terrified. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, never could pull when I was drunk. Um, okay, next one, which is a good one. Have your one-liners at hand. And that is not the same as have a line at hand. Yes, no, that's different. <laughs> don't take drugs. Yes, don't take drugs. As a, as a um, substitute. No. That, that doesn't work. We don't, we're not for one addiction for another unless it's chocolate. Yeah, chocolate's okay. Chocolate's fine. Mm, yeah, go easy though. Um, so this relates to the last one, actually, the opinions of others. Occasionally, some people do have some shit opinions and they can be a bit vocal about them occasionally. Of course, my classic line for anyone that's being rude to you on this special experience (laughs) of you having your first sober night out, just tell them to fuck off. It's no one else's business what you're putting inside your body. If they're giving you a hard time for having a drink of water instead of a beer, then that's their problem. Don't say, as we said before, that you're driving on antibiotics. You have to be honest. The only way to change and destigmatize sobriety is to be honest and shout about it, which we feel really strongly about. It's okay to say no to people. So do say no. Like, I'm not drinking. I'm not having my elbow twisted. And if they're still going on up to you and mm. saying, like, come on, come on, come on, do you know what you should do? Lucy? Time to fuck off. Yeah, knee them in the bollocks. Oh, and that. Yeah. Oh, okay, so it's a double whammy It's here. a double whammy. So you tell them to fuck off, then to you start. knee them in the bollocks. So you tell them to fuck off, and if it, if they don't listen and they carry on, do you tell them to fuck off while you're kneeing them in the bollocks, or do you do... Either. Okay. Yeah. Actually, we're, we're, we're only joking about kneeing them in the bollocks. Yeah, well, the bollocks th- and, and yeah, like, thanks for your advice, Vic. I can see my next sober event going really well. <laughs> you're going to get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I guess what we're saying is just... Maybe don't tell them to fuck off, but just, you know, it's none of their business. Just walk away. Yeah, and be proud enough to say no as well, because Mm. it is amazing what you're doing. And it is a feat to stop drinking and then to go out into that sort of environment. So try and be proud of yourself if you can. Yeah, and you should be. Um, And be prepared to be questioned. I once went for a dinner with some friends and um, when they were all there and when I sat down, I think there was a table of about five of us, four of us it was, because it was sort of where you can all chat in the conversation, you know, without having to break off into groups. And I sat down and they just all questioned me. And the conversation was about the first half hour was about me not drinking. It was done in a really nice way. They were all really supportive, but they were fascinated with what I was doing. Yeah, because because once you're, when you're in it, you can't imagine not doing it. You can't imagine sobriety when you're, when you're a drinker. Yeah. So for some people, it's like, if there's that level of interest, like really intrigue, 
then it's okay for them to be questioning uh, and yes, you. It was, yeah. But it was like I was this rare breed of animal and they wanted to question me about yeah. it. So be ready for that. And remember mm. as well that most people are just, they, they're showing an interest yeah. or they're genuinely intrigued by what you're doing. So, But be prepared that that can happen. It yeah. can be all attention on you and this a wonderful feat that you've managed to achieve. Yeah, and you can still be like, if you're one of those people that does like being the centre of attention, like I think I used to when I was drinking, it sometimes is nice to be the centre of attention in a more positive way. Yeah. Actually, I'm now doing something good. <laughs> At last. At last. Um, next one's really important. Have an escape plan. Yeah, before you go out ever, always make a plan to leave. Have an escape strategy on hand so when people get glassy-eyed and wobbly, you can leg it. Have excuses too. Kids, dinner in the oven. What's mm. yours, Lucy? Well, I just don't go. Yeah, that's good enough. Yeah. <laughs> I have done the dinner in the oven one. Before. Yes, yeah, I remember yeah. you've done that one, yeah. So have excuses. Like, if you do feel like you need to go, that's okay. You can go. Tell people you're leaving before the time comes. So if you want to go at 10 p.m., say to people earlier on in the evening, I'm going to be off at 10 o'clock. So they're not trying to, like, drag you back into the nightclub because avoiding persuasion from piss people is a really good idea because it is annoying. Um, sneak out of the far exit when things get messy. Be honest about how you're feeling. Like, I'm not comfortable here. I've had enough. I'm going home. It's that honesty thing again. And if you can't really face it, Lucy? Don't go. Don't go. That is... <laughs> advice that we or just go or leave the event if you do go and you're not comfortable you can just leave without saying goodbye to anybody no one will even notice probably and that's all right and maybe just try and promise yourself to stay longer next time and it it is a hard thing to do this sober socializing thing so don't beat Mm. yourself up if you don't finish the night off or end up you know doing karaoke at two o'clock in the morning it's a really yeah it's a really hard thing to do just just uh, sort of getting yourself ready, getting yourself out the door and walking in is a hard thing to do. So yeah. even if you get in there and you stay half an hour, you've done something yeah. amazing. And then say, ever... next time I'm going to stay yeah. for five minutes, I'm going to stay two hours and then just keep, yeah. keep at it. And don't feel like a failure if you decide to leave early because you've done an amazing thing by going. Yeah. Um, got one more. Um, oh, this is my one. Have something to look forward to. Yeah, good one. Um, I always like to have something. My dad always says, you've got to have something to look forward to, Lucy. So... Maybe think to yourself, and I've done this before. I've uh, stopped for a nice ice cream on the way home. Yeah. Um, and um, or you can get home, make yourself a big hot chocolate, and sit down to watch a movie. Uh, or what I love doing is plan something for the following morning, which usually the following morning would be completely wiped out. The following morning, I mean, the following two weeks for me is Gosh, usually yeah. wiped out from a big the night calm out. Down, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, you can have a different type of reward instead of alcohol. What would you have, Vic? What would your reward be to yourself after a night out um sex oh with who <laughs> no, i'm joking it's not really <laughs> don't do that anymore. i've been married for 10 years <laughs> that's the last thing on my mind with three children running you surprised around. me with that yeah, no. i thought it was going to be something to do with food <laughs> something <spicy. laughs> oh i do like a muffin <laughs> Mm. Do you <laughs> muffin yeah. in a cup of tea? Well, yeah, muffin in a cup of tea, a piece of cake. I know it sounds yeah. really cheesy. Well, yeah, in English. no, I like a piece of cake as yeah, well. Yeah, a cup of tea and a slice of cake. If I can look forward to that, I mean, when I come home after a night out, I do feel quite wired, so I can't go yes, straight to me bed. Too, yeah. So, like, just to sit down, sort of have a different type of come down where I sit down, have a cup of tea, have a chat with my husband, say what I've been doing, and then look forward to the next morning. Yeah, have a nice breakfast. What are we going to do tomorrow? Just having a plan for the next day is enough for me to be like feel like I'm having a treat just not having a hangover for me is Mm. enough like to think about those days I mean there was over a thousand of them I've worked it out in 25 years that's what my book title is Mm. a thousand wasted Sundays is I you know I spent so much time feeling fear anxiety self-hatred and dread and all of these feelings not having enough not having a hangover now is enough for me to mm. never, ever drink again. Yes. Because I suffered so much with those hangovers, Lucy. It was awful. Yeah, me I too. I mean, my mental state was completely, you know, I felt like a lot of the time I wanted to call up the local hospital yep. and say, can you take me in because I am mentally unwell? And all of that was because of drinking. Yeah. And for me now to just look forward to a Sunday with my family, just chilling out, doing nothing is enough. It is so simple, isn't it? Yeah. And those feelings of anxiety... Um, and everything that comes even before you go out because you know even before you leave the house to go out that you're going to end up with this horrendous hangover but you still can't stop yourself drinking heavily yeah uh, it's just awful yeah so uh, 
it's wonderful even this morning because it's Sunday evening now isn't it this morning I woke up and um, I was a bit tired because my 18 year old daughter did phone me up at 2 30 this morning to tell me that there was a long queue at the taxi rank she'd been out clubbing <laughs> what and can you lift give her a lift yeah. home I said, no, I had a firm chat with her this morning. I said, yes, I have my phone by me when you go out in case there's an emergency. There being a long queue at the taxi rank is not one. Yeah. But the, the thing is, though, Vic, I hadn't been drinking. If I yes. had been drinking and she'd phoned me, my heart would have been pounding. I wouldn't have got back to sleep. I would have had a hangover brewing ready for the next morning. Ooh. But I managed to get back to sleep once I heard her come in and I had a few decent hours sleep and I woke up and it's like, well, sometimes we message each other and go, oh, yeah. it's just another another wonderful day yeah, I, did text, I did text Lucy yesterday with a, a video of my kids dancing on the table to, to actually it was gusto disco revenge for any early cool. 90s house fans um yeah and then Lucy sent me a photo back of what she was doing at the same time which was putting all the pasta in her cupboard in order <laughs> That's the difference between having young children and yeah. having an older my ones. My two were yeah. still in bed and I'm getting a new kitchen, so I've started sorting through my cupboards. So I thought, well, I'd do the pasta cupboard this morning. Oh, gosh, that, you're not selling sobriety there, Lucy, <laughs> with your knitting and lining up your pastas. I tell you what, the simplicity of it all, like you say, a hangover-free day is just the most blissful thing ever, just like doing simple things in life. Yep. Being sober brings back the pleasure out of those tiny, simple things that we just took for granted and couldn't enjoy because we were so busy thinking about when the next drink is coming, getting ourselves plastered or recovering. Yeah. So, yeah. And for those listening who are questioning whether to give up drinking or not, that one thing, that one thing of just having that day where you don't have anxiety, you don't feel Mm. like you hate yourself, you don't have that shame from all the ridiculous escapades you were getting up to the night before, the simplicity of being boring or being content is the word that I would really use, Mm. is so worth it. It's so worth giving up alcohol just for that one reason. It is. It's it's just like another universe that you've tapped into. Yeah. So you've done it. Basically, give yourself a pat on the back. You've had a night out. Hopefully, you'll use those 10 top tips. Top titties. <laughs> so you went out sober, bang the drums, let off the fireworks and blow the trumpets. One down. Yeehaw. Woohoo. I've got written down oh, here. You sound really excited <laughs> about Yeehaw, it. Yeehaw. Woohoo. <laughs> Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. You're a superhero. I might just add, Vic wrote this script yeah, this yeah. week. Yeehaw. Woohoo. <laughs> And if Sorry. you don't have a trumpet to blow, yeah. what does one do then? <laughs> go to Audi. Oh, of course, go to Audi. Your answer for everything is Audi, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, they've got everything out, haven't they? <laughs> Get a trumpet there. Yeah. Next to the shoes. And the wetsuits. Yeah. <laughs> Tips, here we go. <laughs> okay. I know it's hard and challenging and scary, but us sober people have something to prove. We can be fun and be non-drinkers. We can party with you until 10pm. Sobriety <laughs> does not mean giving up fun. It just means redefining it and relearning it. So get out there. Remember that you're not the person that you used to be. And that is a wonderful thing. Well, it it is for us anyway. Um, You've changed. And if people don't like this version of you, well, that doesn't matter. What does matter is your own health and well-being. Be proud that you're not the drunkest person in the room for once. Feel happy that you won't be hung over and there is still a few quid in the bank after a night out. These benefits will soon outweigh your worries about sober socialising. See drinking for what it is, a crutch for so- soaking up our social fears. You don't have to trade in your true, authentic self for a blubbering mess anymore. So embrace you, alcohol-free, with no expectations and no fake smiles that make your face hurt. Yeah, <laughs> It's very rewarding being the one that has made the smarter choices for once. So be smug and be proud to be you. Oh, that's lovely. Oh. <sighs> if you don't enjoy it the first time, keep on going. Every time you make the effort and step out of your comfort zone, it's going to take you a step closer to being a comfortable sober socialiser. It will get easier. Use these tits. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help it. As a guide, write them down and keep them in your handbag and just try your best. This is going to be a learning curve for you and your friends, and it will take time to get used to, so don't put too much pressure on that first night out being perfect. At Sober Awkward, we don't like perfect. We like fucked up, 
but trying to do better. Yep. Always trying to improve and always learning as well. Give yourself treats. What you're doing is deserving of some respect and chocolate. So grab some dairy milk on the way home and buy yourself a new pair of shoes with all the money you've saved. And don't worry, the bright lights will dim, the music will soften and after a while you'll learn where you fit into this new social world. After all, you can't stay at home forever. Go out, flirt, dance, chat and mingle. Then skip home in time for a movie and a cuppa and a gymungous tub of ice cream with extra ice magic. <sighs> oh, yes. Now we're ice talking. Ice magic. Yum. Mint flavoured. Yes. Mint? Oh. It's got to have the mint flavour Yeah, you one. have, haven't The you? best. <laughs> we're obsessed with food. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And remember, one of the ways social, social socialising will get easier if society's attitude towards sobriety changes and we eventually destigmatise saying no to booze. If we tell our sober stories like we do all the time and keep on being loud about our sobriety, then the easier it will become for others to be honest about quitting drinking. You never know. Your changes could influence people for generations to come. Now, wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, it would be cool. So you've done it. We want you to email us and tell us how it went. So if any of you guys out there go out on a sober social event, we want to know about it because we yeah, want to we tell do. people about it next time we do a recording. So email me at drunkmummysobermummy at gmail.com and we'll share some of your stories next time. Our book this week is Glorious Rock Bottom by Bryony Gordon. Bryony Gordon is a respected journalist and number one selling author and award-winning mental health campaign. Uh, campaigner she is also an alcoholic i read that book it is really funny and really inspiring so really recommend that one guys i haven't got a quote lucy i couldn't be asked (laughs) sometimes i get a bit bored of quotes yeah my favorite one is one with us with a with an ocean it's this beautiful picture and all it says at the top is i love onion rings (laughs) that's my kind of quote quote then i love onion rings there you go well, I know. And sometimes, yeah, I don't know, sometimes the quotes just, they don't really work for me. Sometimes I need a bit of inspiration. So I tap into Google sober quotes and oh, yeah. just all the drinking, it all comes up about drinking. It's yeah. like, it's just not work. Oh yeah, it's those to... 1950s mums wine yes. time things. Yeah, always. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Thank you everybody for listening. And hopefully next time we're going to talk about the benefits of sobriety, aren't we, Lucy? Yeah, we're going to talk about all, well, and also the sort of unexpected things, things because we know a lot of people know the obvious, but there are a lot of things that happen along the way that are really, really cool. So we're going to talk about those. Yeah, we're going to do a positive one because I think the one after that we might be a bit do a bit of a dark, yeah, go a bit one. darker, go a bit and dark, deeper. Yes, but if anyone's got any suggestions for podcast ideas, if there, are, I mean, we've got so many topics ahead of us and so many ideas to cover. But if there's anything that you really want to hear us talk about, yeah, just just uh, email Vic at drunk mummy sober mummy. Yep. At gmail.com. At gmail.com, yeah. And um, yeah, and we, we certainly take on board and we love to get some feedback. Yeah, and we like to uh, be able to uh, be the front running wellness podcast that advises people to buy trumpets and tell people to fuck off yeah. and leave them in the bollocks. Exactly. I think we're <laughs> providing really useful advice. Yeah, here, I hope there's no real intellectuals listening to this. Sorry if you are, because <laughs> this probably isn't the kind of space that you're enjoying with us swearing and. I don't know, talking about booze all the time. <laughs> Our terrible booze stories. being smug and sober. Yeah. We're the worst. I don't want to hang out with us at all. I hate us. I hate us as well. <laughs> Come on, let's go. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Sober Awkward podcast. If alcohol is affecting your life in a negative way, you're struggling to moderate or your hangovers are causing anxiety, it might be time for you to reach out for help. Contact your local doctor, a therapist or connect with a local AA or sobriety group. In fact, Vicky's got a really great one. Yeah, it's the Sober Social for Sober Curious Women. You can just search for that on Facebook. Lucy and I will both agree that even though this journey can be awkward, it's definitely worth it. And if we can do it, then you can too. For more support around sobriety, head to my website, drunkmummysobermummy.com and Lucy runs an online space to support and inspire single mums. Find out more at beanstalkmums.com.au Finally, if you've loved the Sober Awkward podcast, don't forget to subscribe, rate, give a review and share it with your mates. But don't worry, we won't be angry if you don't. I might be a bit angry, Lucy. I can't say that. They won't mind. No, it's just rude.
Thank you.